Okay, let's talk about the Praxis Middle School Math Exam, and that is test code 5164. And because you're watching this video, I assume you are preparing for this exam, and that is fantastic, as we definitely need as many great math teachers as possible. So what I have here for you is a practice problem that you should be able to uh, complete with no problem uh, if you are fully prepared for this particular Praxis exam. So uh, basically for this particular problem, do not use your calculator. Of course, you should be able to uh, uh, know how to use your calculator to answer this question. But in this case, do not use your calculator. But here's the question. You have an angle theta. So the cosine of this angle theta is equal to one half. How many degrees is this angle? All right, so if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer uh, into the comment section. I'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second, and then, of course, I'm going to fully explain this problem. But uh, before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I have been teaching math for decades, and I certainly understand what it's like uh, to be a math teacher and take certification exams to include the praxis. Now, I'm going to tell you something that you probably already know. These exams are not easy, okay? Especially the math exams, you really have to know your stuff. And when it comes to uh, this particular praxis, you're going to have to know a lot of advanced high school level mathematics, okay? And even if you have a degree in math, if you've been away from all this material for some time, you're going to have to reimmerse yourself in it completely to be fully ready for this exam. A lot of uh, uh, people take these exams and then they don't pass the first time out, then they gotta take it two or three times, where really they could pass the first time if they studied you know, uh, you know, know, with the right level of intensity, let's just say that. So hopefully you have a great study plan, but I have an outstanding test prep course for this particular praxis. You can find a link to it in the description below. Uh, it has a massive amount of uh, instruction and everything you need to know to get ready for this particular praxis. Of course, we're talking about middle school math 5164. All right, so let's go ahead and get into the problem. So the cosine of some angle, uh, some angle theta is equal to one half. What is this angle? Well, here is the answer. The uh, cosine uh, theta is equal to one half. Of course, that was the question. The angle is 60 degrees. All right, so hopefully you got this correct. And if you did get this right, uh, that's obviously very good. But again, that's only one uh, piece of what you're going to need to know for this particular praxis. Uh, now, if you didn't get this right, just use this as feedback as, hey, you need to study a lot more. But the topic that we're talking about here is right angle trigonometry. All right, this is really important stuff. And you likely uh, will be teaching this if you're going to be um, teaching math at you know the middle school level, at least in a real basic way. Uh, now, sometimes, uh, more often than not, uh, students are introduced to right angle trigonometry, like in a high school trigonometry course. But you may, uh, you know, find yourself talking about these topics even in middle school. All right, so right angle trigonometry, uh, really, what we're talking about more specifically is trigonometric ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent. That's what we're going to need to know in order to solve this problem. So what we have here is this great phrase, and hopefully you're familiar with it. I'm pretty sure you are, or something like it. It's SOKATOA. SOKATOA. It's just a little mnemonic memory aid uh, so we can uh, remember the appropriate trigonometric ratios. So what we need first is a right triangle because we are talking about right uh, triangle trigonometry. And the longest side of a right triangle, of course, is the hypotenuse. So we'll label that H. Now, let's suppose our angle is right here, okay? It's important to know the location of the angle because the angle could be right in this corner or in this corner here. But we are talking about a right triangle. But if the angle is located right here, the opposite side is going to be the leg of the triangle that's opposite away from the angle. Okay, and of course, this location right here, this would be the opposite side. And then this side is adjacent to the angle. It's actually uh, forming the angle with the hypotenuse. So this would be the A. So you need to know what the O and the A and the H is 
uh, of course, the hypotenuse opposite and adjacent side, and uh, with respect to where the angle's at. Okay, now if you know that, then we can define the sine, cosine, and tangent of an angle, right? Again, these are ratios, i.e. fractions. So the sine of this angle here, theta, is the opposite over the hypotenuse. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the tangent is opposite over the adjacent. Okay, so hopefully this is, you know, just bringing back memories of things that you already know, and if that is the case, that's fantastic. So let's go ahead and apply this, and we need to keep the cosine in mind because this was part of the given information. All right, let's go down and now use that uh, given fact that the cosine of this respective angle is equal to one half, meaning that we know the adjacent, okay, because cosine is adjacent of our hypotenuse and we know the hypotenuse, right? So you can see here the cosine of this angle adjacent over hypotenuse is equal to one half. So what we want to do is reconstruct a right triangle, okay? We're talking about right triangles here where we have the adjacent side of an angle okay, equal to one, because that's what it is right here, and the hypotenuse equal to two, all right? So when we um, kind of, you know, reconstruct this right triangle's measurements uh, based upon the, the, the cosine theta of this angle is one half, we come up with a right triangle like so, okay? So basically the adjacent is one, the hypotenuse is two, and obviously it's pretty easy to solve for this side of uh, the triangle using the Pythagorean theorem, right? A squared plus B squared would equal to C squared. We can get uh, this side right there. However, you should look at this triangle and uh, uh, you should identify it as a special right triangle, all right? So there are special right triangles that you need to know. Those would be 30, 60, 90 degree right triangles and 45, 45, 90 uh, right triangles, okay? These come up all the time in trigonometry. So here, a 60 degree, a 30, 60, 90 uh, right triangle has the uh, sides or the lengths of the triangle as the following. So it's gonna be one. Uh, the hypotenuse is always double the shortest side. So you can see here we have one, that's two. And then this leg here is going to be whatever the shortest side is times the square root of three. So this is really one square root of three. Now, you could have uh, uh, taken, um, you know, again, the Pythagorean theorem to get this side here, or you could just recognize this. Oh, this is one, this is two, and recognize this as a 30, 60, 90 special right triangle. So the next thing to uh, do here is to identify what angle is 60 and what angle is 30. So you really want to try to uh, sketch out in the most accurate way a uh, right a, uh, a right triangle with these dimensions. So here, this would be one that would be the shortest side. This would be two. This is the middle side. So here, obviously, this angle appears to be larger. That's where our 60s at. Here's where our 30s at. So what is the angle in question where we have a cosine of this angle is equal to one half? Well, of course, that angle is 60 degrees. All right, now, I did mention uh, calculators, right? So you could, obviously, if uh, you need to use a calculator or can use a calculator, you could just find the arc cosine of one half, uh, make sure your calculator is in degree mode, and again, you would end up with 60 degrees. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best on this uh, particular Praxis exam. Again, make sure to check out my test prep course. It will help you out uh, tremendously. Uh, thank you for your time and have a great day.